Five Weddings is the name of the movie जिसकी star cast में थे राजकुमार राव and नरगिस फकरी इतनी amazing star cast होने के बाद भी ये movie कब आई और कब चली गई किसी को नहीं पता चला नम्रता गुजराल is the US based director of this movie and she has been really disappointed she is joining us today from LA let's find out from her कि actually what didn't work out hi नम्रता thank you so much for joining us today on Planet Bollywood you said that you've been very disappointed with the star cast you tell us what went wrong First of all, thank 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 you very much for having me. Um, it's an important platform because when you have a story to tell and you have something important to say, it's um, incumbent upon the media to be able to show fairness in both angles of the story. And I find it terrific that Zoom creates opportunities where people can come in. contribute their sides of the stories and let the audience make the decision. So first of all, kudos to every single one of you for doing that and I'm very encouraged and very honored to be here. Let me start with that. Um in terms of my film Five Weddings, uh which I directed and produced and this picture released in India, I would say maybe about a month ago, uh the film started shooting um about a, a year and a half prior to that nargis fakri was brought on board first and raj was brought on board after nargis um as we were sort of going into our shooting schedule i will i'll make this very tight a couple of weeks prior to the shooting of the film we had all our locations locked everything was locked and we got a call from nargis's agent in london saying that nargis had been threatened by some people in india if she did a film that had hijras and the cops intermingling with each other which is what the actual story was that the cops were soliciting favors from the hijras right, right? so nargis was very upset well where am i going to go find an actress 2 weeks before shooting that is half indian and half american and fits the bill so well So I uh, talked to Nargis and her agent and I said how about if we just water down some of the parts it was a that was a very challenging uh time for me as a filmmaker because you only have two routes you can go a you can say okay well if I can make this picture I'm not making it I ain't making it yeah. your other route is you know it's a story I really want to tell can I perhaps start a dialogue with the story and either pick it up on the next film or let somebody else take the baton and carry it forward okay. now me with my personality being the crazy sickeny that I that I am which I am i said all aboard we'll do what we have to do right. so we went ahead and within a week we watered down the script um it the script went to the ministry of information and broadcasting they had a lot of problems with the hijras too not just nargis and i said okay everyone seems to have a problem with the hijras let's really really water it down and raj called me and he said number i don't know why we're doing this this is really going to compromise the script and i said honey i know i am so sorry but i don't have a choice i don't know what to do here right. and i said but i fully understand if you are out because this is not the script that you signed up for right and he said no i'm in we'll do it we'll do the best we can yeah uh-huh. and i was saying to someone earlier when you say we'll do the best we can and you jump both feet in then you try to stick with it to do the best you can right so make a long story short we made the picture with the hijras in fact some of the hijra scenes in the film we shot them on the sly the film was turning out great we had a great editor we were doing really good raj was very excited about it i still remember the first time he watched it and he and patra leka his girlfriend watched it together he wrote he called me back he said you know patra th- patra thinks it looks just like monsoon wedding you know we're having all these conversations and he says you know i really wish it was still like the other film but that's what it is And then I don't want to mention names but there was a guy at his company that watched the film and it's almost as if I clearly remember that day when the dynamic completely changed and I started getting calls such as 
uh, maybe you shouldn't release this movie in India. Or, you know, Raj is a really big actor now, and this doesn't really fit with his career trajectory. Maybe you should think about doing something else. Or, even worse, uh, maybe you should just not do the film in Hindi. And I said to this guy, I said, correct me if I'm wrong, Raj's base, how Raj came to where, where he is today, is from Hindi films and small films. Right. Are you telling me that now Hindi films and small film films for him are a problem? Yeah. Because that's what got him to where he is, right? right? True. And Raj is a nice guy, but you know, I've been in the entertainment industry for 30 years. I know exactly how this dance plays out. So I kind of know what's going on here, right? And I'm, I said to Raj one day, I called him, I said, Raj, the only people that are gonna suffer in this are gonna be you and me. Your managers are not gonna suffer, your PR is not gonna suffer, the attorneys are not gonna suffer. It's gonna be you and me dragged through the mud. And we're not gonna do that. Right. And he promised me, he said, Namrita, I love the film. I would never do anything against the picture. I'm just really busy right now, we'll get it done. We come close to our release date and it's like 10 days before release and there is no a trailer, no nothing, not even a hint. So I keep calling his peeps and I keep getting, oh yeah, he's really busy, he's in Gujarat, he's shooting made in China. And I said, yeah, but he's tweeting about somebody's, some aunt, you know? He can tweet about the movie. I mean, if he's got time to tweet, he's got time to tweet. In the meantime, I have Middle Eastern press just uh, College Times, Gulf News, The National. Hey, what's happening with Raj? Why isn't he tweeting anything? In the meantime, then Nargis is saying, well, if Raj is not tweeting anything, I'm going to scale back because it makes me look like an idiot. I'm like, great. I hired two actors. I can't change any of them because they're in my freaking film. Yeah. Censors has pretty much destroyed my film. I was left by myself kind of floundering and going, Everybody wants this picture. I don't know what happened to my actors. So yeah. it, was, um, it was an interesting ride, one that I will not forget. I know Raj is very popular in India now. Raj is actually a very nice guy. I mean that very sincerely. But nice guys can also be misled and can make mistakes. Right. And this was a mistake that Raj made because the hard work of so many people put on this picture. This was not about him and me. This was about the hundreds of people that made this movie together. And people right. would write to me and say, from India, ma'am, do you know that actor? He is very famous in India now. I'm so happy in his, to be in his movie. Then those same people would write to me, you know, grips and gaffers right. and stuff. Ma'am, why isn't he putting anything on his page? And I'd be like, honey, I don't know. So, right. yeah. Right. Namrata ji, talk about censorship, there were a lot of things that you had to edit out from the film, to remove it, which was a bad effect on the basic story of the film's basic story. What was the film that was so much controversial that you had to edit it? Tell me about it. So, uh, thank you. That's a, that's a terrific question. And I'm very glad that I'm able to address it on a platform where hopefully more than me, some other filmmakers in India will also understand. I call it the craziness of Indian censors. There's no other way to put it. We don't have censors where I live. We just do our ratings. So for me, censorship in and of itself is a very alien concept. But the, the censorship kind of started from the get-go. So it's as you have your film, you submit your picture to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. And if they don't like certain things, which is something that happened after Slumdog Millionaire came about and they wanted to keep things a little bit more contained in terms of how they were presented to the West. Mm -hmm. So they, um, uh, you know, they, they sort of say, okay, well, not these parts and not this bit, but you can have this and this. And then you start redoing your storyline. So it started with that, went on to Nargis, then in, while we were shooting, during shooting, they were, you know, people would come tell me, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. But then once the film was done and it actually went to the censors board, and this is what I think it's, I think it's a great idea to perhaps have a censor board that does your uh, ratings, that tells people this 
film is not appropriate for a six-year-old or it's not appropriate for a 12-year-old, but to ask you to take out chunks of your film that completely change the tone and, and actually the end result of the film. They made me take out the last scene and now the movie makes no sense, by the way. I'm saying this myself as a filmmaker. My movie makes no sense. So it was to that point. Uh, in particular, I'll tell you about a scene. There was a scene with Nargis where she kind of leans over and you can see a little bit of her cleavage. And uh, they said, oh, Nargis's cleavage, that has to be taken out. And I said, why? I see all these item numbers in Indian movies now, and their cleavage goes from here down to their midriff. It's all cleavage. And they said, no, 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 no. And we had to take it out. So, Namrata, somewhere you also agree that the final content of the movie was not with your expectations or with Rajkumar Rao. But your theory was that only the content was not a reason. Besides, Rajkumar Rao was probably miffed for a reason. Do you want to talk about that? Which thing was that you didn't like when he was interacting with you? So, so um, if I'm understanding you ladies correctly, I think uh, the question is, that um, uh, recently there was a news report out of the Middle East that talked about um, the reason for his alienation from the picture possibly being uh, the fact that Petra was not cast in the picture, right? There was an actor in the film that Raj well, didn't care about that much, and he said, oh, you know what, you'd be much better with Petra in it, because Petra was actually in Chandigarh, had visited him. And we just laughed about it. I said, you know what, next time, next time. Uh, the next time we talked about something where we didn't agree was when he said, I don't think we should release the film in Hindi. Hmm. The next time we didn't agree on something, he said, I don't think we should release this film in India. Now, I don't know which of those... Uh, and, and then in all of this, there was also his Screen Actors Guild card, which the first time got denied by the U.S. government because our immigration is so strict now and he called me and I said, Raj, I, I have no control over immigration. Um, it happens or it doesn't happen. It, it, you know, but, but because I promised you that I would try to do it for you, I will personally, not out of the movie's money, I'll personally reapply for you from the company and sponsor you and let's see what happens. And the day, Raj and I ended up having a huge fight, by the way. The day we had that fight, the next day his visa came through. So, um, you know, I don't know, a serendipity or something. But in all of this, I still don't know exactly why he alienated and walked away from the film. Here's my question. What kind of decent human being, forget about being an actor, what kind of decent human being walks away from a commitment mm -hmm. where there are so many people's careers at stake. Namrata ji, you have to ask me this question, what is the shape of this film, what is the shape of this film, what is your mind on India based film, or are you skeptical of Indian actors? That is such a great question, and thank you for asking me that. I will tell you that I'm Indian American, my family is from Punjab, and the first film that I made, which was about 15 years ago, I remember I said to the distributors, I really want this to release in India. And the distributor said, this movie is not for India. And I said, okay, then I made a couple more and they said, it's not for India. So I was so excited with five weddings that I could finally release a picture in my land of birth. And that didn't really turn out too well. Uh, but it, it hasn't stopped me because I am a forever positive Sardarni, that's it. And nothing gets me down. I've been through cancer a couple of times. I've been through all kinds of things. I, I'm not the kind of person who, it's like, you know what? Honda is in the Geech, it's okay. We'll get over it, we'll move on. So next week, I'm actually starting another picture and this is on the rape, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very into uh, women's rights and transgender rights and just equal rights and human, humanitarian rights. And so my next film is going to be on the rape culture and um, has a very well-known Pakistani actress and possibly a very well-known uh, Indian Bollywood actor with her. So we're already working with India. So it didn't even take, what, like a month and I'm back. 
हम सिर्फ यही एक्सपेक्ट कर सकते हैं कि राजकुमार राव आए एंड ही कैन गिव अ प्लॉसिबल रिएक्शन दैट क्यों उन्होंने अपने पैर इस मूवी से दूर कर लिए थे एंड क्यों उन्होंने आपको प्रमोट नहीं किया या जिस तरह का सपोर्ट आप सीख कर रही थी वो आपको क्यों नहीं मिला बट थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग आस योर ऑन जूम थैंक यू सो मच प्लान बॉलीवुड में फिलहाल वक्त है एक छोटे से ब्रेक का विल बी राइट बैक यू स्टे ट्यून Well, it's that time on our show again, where we talk about our celebrities and their style statements, and of course, we have with us our in-house style expert, Shikha Kohli. Hi, Shikha. Welcome. Hi, guys. Shikha, we have to talk about the wedding of the month. Ranveer and Deepika and Dono, अपने normal, usual कपड़ों से सब इस आदमी से निकलकर किसी नए अवतार में दिखे हैं. So this is the talk. Of the day, what do you think about this style? So yes, अब तक के उनके जितने भी looks रहे हैं वो काफ़ी simple और traditional रहे हैं I think Ranveer was um, kind of taking style tips from Deepika और वो simple और traditional outfits पहन रहे थे जो Deepika का style है But this party was all about Ranveer Singh and his extravagant style. तो Ranveer Singh ने पहना था एक glow in the dark शेरवानी jacket. with a pair of pants and it was designed by Manish Arora now unme heart prints the different type of motifs were there it was a lot of fun and i think kahin par the theme of the party was psychedelic to unke jo pictures bhi release hoye the wo kafi cool the and of course his sherwani was glowing in the dark now ranveer ne ye bhi kaha tha that to oblige his request Deepika was wearing a outfit which was a little bit quirky yet classic. तो उन्होंने एक फ्लोरल लहंगा पहना था बाय साबी साची मुखर्जी अगेन. But the floral lehenga was styled a bit differently. She wore a tiara on her head almost like a floral headband aur unhone bahut hi raw and rugged smoky eyes pehne the and then she wore a veil over that. And Ranveer Singh ne ye bahut hi mazedar comment bhi diya tha ki unhone kaha tha ki she is obliging me and she is dressed like Frida Kahlo. So and I think which she was because Frida Kahlo is a huge fashion icon and she was known for her uh, use of florals in her outfits which Deepika had done with this lehenga and I think both of them look great. Well, Shikha, another Bollywood diva who I would love to talk over and over about is Kareena Kapoor Khan. Two dresses उन्होंने पहने. Of course, you know, one was for a press conference and the other one was a red carpet event. But they were both so stunning and different from each other. Exactly. So I think Kareena was dressed. I I think she was the most glamorous guest of them all. Uh, she looked great. Let's talk about the press conference outfit first. She was wearing a black gown. Now it was a very simple black gown that had a mermaid hem that flowed back. It had a strappy V neckline. It was a little bit plunging and sexy. And she, of course, styled it with her classy, uh, smoky eyes and her hair worn in loose waves. But I think यहाँ पर इस गाउन की U S P ये थी that the fit was absolutely right because I think ऐसे outfits के साथ अगर आपका fit right ना हो तो it can become a big disaster because there's nothing happening in this look. It's a plain black gown, but Karina looked like she was. Poured into the gown because the fit was so good. So I think that's where this gown wins, and I really like this look. The other look that she was wearing was this metallic, fun, really glamorous, high fashion look that she was wearing. Again, absolutely nothing wrong with the styling, with the outfit, with the makeup. She looked amazing, but. कहीं ना कहीं मुझे ऐसे लगा था शी वॉज अ बिट ओवर ड्रेस्ड फॉर द इवेंट वेल द अदर अटेंडीज वो ड्रेस्ड अप एज वेल एंड एट येस इट वॉज अ रेड कार्पेट इवेंट आई थिंक शी कूड हैव सेव्ड दिस आउटफिट फॉर एन अवॉर्ड शो और मे बी सम अदर इवेंट दैट वॉज बिगर बिकॉज इट्स सच अ ग्रेट आउटफिट इट कूड हैव वर्कड ओवर दैर यहाँ पर शी लुक अ बिट ओ टी टी अ बिट ओवर ड्रेस्ड शी कूड हैव गॉन अ लिटल सिंपल ऑफ दिस इवेंट बट आई थिंक यू ड्राइव अ बी ओवर ड्रेस दैन बी अंडर ड्रेस्ड so it's okay but i wish she would have gone a little simpler next on the same event we also spotted frida pinto she was wearing a sari mostly hum unko hamesha you know dekhte hain to gowns mein hi dekhte hain but this was i think uh, in a long time that she wore something traditional what do you have to say so i was actually super happy and glad that frida picked a sari because this is the world premiere of mogli which is happening in india it's a story that is so close to our roots i wish other actresses also would have come out wearing indian clothes and frida picked a very classical sari she went with a monochrome look it was a black sari with white embroidery on it she looked great the hair and makeup was fab in fact agar madhuri dikshit also would have picked a sari she would have looked so beautiful 
so pretty. I don't see the reason why she picked that dress. And I think Frida was the best one. She nailed the look. I would, in fact, go to the extent of saying, I think she looked better than Kadina. And I love the fact that she dressed in a sari. Now the actress that we have on our list is Anushka Sharma. She was seen in this all white avatar, but this is a little high fashion look that she wore at the promotions of Zero. But what do you have to say? How many thumbs up is she getting? So with Anushka, I've noticed that when she likes a trend, she tends to gravitate towards it. And for her promotional looks, then she tries to stick to that trend. So if she's liking boho, then her entire promotional wardrobe is going to be boho. And I think that Anushka is a uh, metallics and sequins and you know shiny glittery trends ki taraf gravitate kar rahi hai, which is great because we're in the party season so she makes a great outfit inspiration uh, zero ke trailer launch mein bhi unhone ek purplish color ki uh, sequins dress pani thi which was a midi dress and i think she styled it excellently and now for the promotions of zero she was wearing a metallic silver high waisted wide leg pant um, now what I like about this look is that unhone uh, ye pants ko rakha apne look ka focus. The pants had a paperback waist which I think is a huge trend and girls you must try it. And she styled it with a one shoulder white top. So the entire look was balanced where you could tell that the pants are the focus. And then for makeup and hair also, she kept her hair simple straight in the center part. And I, what I like about the makeup is that she was wearing silver um, eyeshadow on her eyes which matched the pants, so I think that was a very smart move. Instead of wearing something very simple, she again added a bit of metallics to her makeup look as well. So that just goes to show how your makeup look also affects your entire look so much. So I think Anushka ke liye hamare taraf se ek thumbs up hai. Thank you so much Shikha Thank for being with us today and sharing your expertise. And I'm pretty sure our audience Navy will learn a lot from you and they're going to implement it. But before we leave, let me tell you what I'm wearing today, my OOTD, that is outfit of the day. I'm wearing a mustard one shoulder gown with minimal accessories and printed heels. And I'm wearing this navy blue floral printed one shoulder top with black skirt, black heels and some gold accessories. Well, this was all on today's episode. We will see you tomorrow right here. You keep watching Zoom, styled by Mintra.